multi-line patterns. Those things that we all hate because they look like spaghetti was dropped onto a piece of tissue paper. Ew. Those patterns really became a thing in the rockin' 1980s. However, before that time frame, no one really would take it the time to measure each size and see how they differed. Until today, that is. Hi folks, my name is Stephanie Canada. Yes, just like that country, and no, I don't live there. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be taking these three 1950s patterns, Butterick 7383, in a bust 30, 32, and 34. And in an attempt to see how vintage patterns actually scale, we're gonna be laying them on the table and measuring them to find out. But a couple of disclaimers need to be said before we truly get started. Number one, I am not a vintage pattern scaling aficionado. That's why we're doing this. Because I too would like to know this answer of how exactly the vintage patterns are scaled. Number two, I am going to do my best to give you an appropriate idea of the differences. But because I've never actually scaled a pattern professionally, I might make a couple of flubs along the way. And so if anyone is out there that actually has done this, please do let me know because I don't want to be giving wrong information to folks. I just want to measure them and know what the differences are. And number three, anytime we're going to line these up, we're always going to start with the smallest on top and we're going to go all the way down to the largest. Warning, do not attempt this with an unprinted pattern unless you are very clear on how and which ones you're working with. This is why we're doing a 1950s from Butterick because they're all labeled. So I can't get up. And so they can all go back in the right envelopes afterwards because they're all actually for sale. So let's get measuring. So of course, starting off with number one, which is the skirt back. But first we see these lovely pattern weights that I made in this video right here. I'll include the link down in the description box if you'd like to go watch that when you're done here. So what I have done is I have lined up the center back seam, which while it's not supposed to be cut on the fold, it's gonna be the best way to get the grading outwards and the dart adjustments as well as the side. So we're gonna go ahead and measure how the dart changes along the top. Your bust 30, which is a hip of 33, measures in at just shy of four inches, like probably a 30 second away from four inches. And then we move on to the next one, which is actually a bust 32 hip of 35, which sits right at four inches. And the bust 34, which is a waist of 37, is four and a quarter. And what's interesting is at this hip notch, you are looking at a 3 8 inch difference from the size 12 to the size 14, and then a full half inch difference from a 14 to a 16. So the grading becomes much steeper, even though really we should be evenly grading out. Interesting. And then by the time we get to the bottom, you're actually looking at a one and an eighth inch difference, but from the 12 to the 14, it is five eighth inch difference and it holds the same half inch from the 14 to the 16. And I'm not really sure what happened to the bottoms here. These are all supposed to be one quarter inch slightly longer than the rest. And yet uh, the 14 and 16 are basically the same. And the 12 is the only one that has the quarter inch difference. Maybe somebody on the factory floor just got excited and shortened something that day. I don't know. Now for the skirt front, which is piece number two, I am lined up the very center front and we'll be measuring out along the sides because the uh, pleating doesn't seem to have moved except maybe like a 16th of an inch. It's really negligible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look here on the sides right at this pinnacle and they're on an angle. So I'm gonna try and take the angle here. So from the 12 to 14, it looks like we're at 3 eighths of an inch. And from the 14 to the 16, again, we're holding that half inch difference. So that's interesting. I figured it would be an even number between each size, but it looks like on the smaller sizes, they were able to adjust slightly smaller, but we're not seeing that. At the bottom of the skirt, you are seeing a 3 8 inch difference between the 12 and the 14 and a 3 8 inch difference from the 14 to the 16. So while it gave you more room at the hip, they didn't actually widen the skirt all the way down to go along with it. And the other thing is that, well, the size 12 hemline is at the exact same hemline marking as the size 16, and yet the size 14 is definitely a quarter inch down. I have no words. And in honor of clarity, I am gonna skip piece number three, which is the pocket facing. However, we are gonna see if there are different pocket sizes for different sizes. Oh my God, they're actually slightly different sizes. Color me shocked. Now that we have the straight grains lined up, 
we are a quarter inch different between sizes. So as you go up, so does the size of your pocket by a quarter of an inch. Now it doesn't seem to be the length has changed because it looks like the length is actually, it's actually even. Uh, on the far side, since I did line it up with a straight of grain, it's not like one side is correct. It looks like we have a 16th inch difference on either side. I'm assuming that's also to like go with the notches of where you attach your pocket, even though there's no notch on the top. So maybe I'm a dirty liar. Interesting. I didn't think the pocket would be any bigger. I was wrong. So maybe it's just me, but there's something really nice and soothing about seeing the nice continuation of the vintage patterns when they're all stacked on top of one another. And I know that all I have to do is separate them to get the lines away again. I didn't anticipate this to be a video about digging modern patterns, but here we are. So what I have done is I have lined up perfectly the center back seam as perfectly as I can. And then I made the top point my reference point. So we are looking at three sixteenth of a difference between the 12 to the 14 and the 14 to the 16, where your neckline is going out. Well, then you look at the shoulder and the shoulders are also, the shoulders are moving out one eighth of an inch each time. So there's an eighth of an inch difference between the 12 and the 14, 14 and the 16. So along the outer edge of the arm, you're looking at three eighths inch difference between the 12 to the 14 and 14 to the 16. So all of these measurements are actually even as opposed to the skirts, which were sort of wonky. Interesting. Let's check the bottom and see how the bottoms do. So by the time you get to the middle of our double notches, you're looking at a half inch difference between the 12 to the 14 and a three eighth inch difference between the 14 to the 16. And that holds true all the way down the line. So from the edge of the pattern to the dart centers, you are looking at an even quarter inch difference as the dart moves farther out. So even though the edges are slightly different, the darting is moving out an even quarter inch each time. Let's check out the front. So what I've done is I have lined up number six on the front fold and we're gonna go ahead and start measuring. It looks like number six on the front corner is gonna have the same 3 16th inch difference between the pinnacles of each neck. And so that means the curvature is slightly more in each size. So then when you look at the outside edge here, we are looking at a 3 8 inch difference between the 12 and the 14 and looks like just shy of a 3 8 inch difference from the 14 to the 16. So that could probably be a little bit of the fact that some of my lines have been cut into and what I'm lining up isn't precise, but I would say safely it's 3 8 of an inch difference as you go out along the shoulder. The tissue density made the darts hard to measure, but after measuring each individually, I was able to discover that each dart was 1 8 inch longer than the previous size. Wider darts for larger busts. I mean, logically that makes sense, right? So by the time we get to the bottom, you're looking at an even 3 8 inch difference again. So it does look like the dart placement along the backs moves more so in the front between a 12 to 14 than it does between a 14 and a 16. 14 and a 16 was probably a 16th inch difference, whereas the 12 to 14 was a full quarter inch difference. Now we will be skipping pieces seven and eight because they are the back neck facing and the front neck facing. The reason we're skipping these is because all they do is they go along the actual top of the piece that we've already measured. So I don't feel a need to decide if these are any different because well, even if these are missing, you can make your own quite easily. However, I do feel the need to go into the jacket. So thankfully the jacket back is probably going to be the easiest piece we have here because the rest of the jacket is fitted and that's gonna probably suck. But for this one, we were able to line it up back on that center fold. So it will be a little bit easier to deduce. Okay, cute. Am I actually lined up correctly? Sure am. So the biggest jump is going to be between the 12 to the 14, where you have a 3 16th inch difference between the pinnacles for the back of the neck seam right here. And then uh, that's like maybe 1 16th of an inch difference between the 14 and the 16. And then moving on to the, we're gonna go out to the outer edge right here now, which is going to be a quarter inch difference between each. So once we get out to this point, you're at a nice even quarter inch. So if you're trying to size up, you could go a quarter inch out. At the top of the seam, however, you are gaining one eighth of an inch every time. Now, by the time we get out here to the end point, whoa, yeah, I'm lined up right. So from the 12 to the 16 is a solid one inch difference. However, from the 12 to the 14, you're looking at a 5 8 inch difference, whereas the 14 to the 16, you're only looking at a 3 8 inch difference. And I did double check, my lines are lined up correctly on the back. So that is interesting. The double-ended darts, or fisheye darts, 
At the waist, each measured 10 and 1 quarter inch long for all sizes. I find it interesting that as you go down along the side, it is a full half inch difference as you go along, including at the waist dart. However, the waistline dotation is 3 16th of an inch difference between each size, but the bottoms from the 12 to the 14, you get a full quarter inch difference and the 14 to the 16 is almost none. Now what I've done for the jacket front is I have lined up the center front line that you can see right here. I have done my absolute best to try and get this to line up as neatly as I can but there's a lot of different little foibles to this fitted jacket. So it definitely has made this a little bit harder. So what we can see is the very top from the 12 to the 14, you are looking at a one quarter inch difference. Whereas from the 14 to the 16, you're looking at a one eighth inch difference. By the time you get out here, you are looking at three eighth of an inch difference from the 12 to the 14 and a one quarter inch difference from the 14 to the 16. Now, what I find interesting is that because I lined up the center front, there is actually, you have this point where the 12 is jutting out eighth of an inch. And that is because of the angles that you're creating in through here that are smaller and sharper for the 12 versus the 14 or the 16. And by the time we get out for, to the edge of the shoulder, the 12 to the 14 jump is still larger. So you're looking at a one quarter inch difference between the 12 to the 14 and only a 3 16th difference between the 14 to the 16. Why, at the time we get down to the notches that are inside the arm's eye, you're actually looking at a quarter inch difference between each. And then again, because of the sharper angles that are created in the arm's eye, the 12 again sort of juts out of the 14, but again, that has to do with the curvature of the arm's eye, not necessarily that the 12 is larger. It's not, it just has sharper curves. So this is interesting. The 12 to the 14 is 3 8 of an inch difference, whereas the 14 to the 16 is a full half inch difference. Then by the time we get down to the waistline, we're looking at, again, the same like half inch in between each. By the time you get down to the end, from the 12 to the 14 is a 3 8 inch difference. And from the <laughs> 14 to the 16 is almost a 5 8 inch difference. Now, for those that are wondering about the outside, there's really not much of a change. There looks to be a 1 8 inch change over all three pieces. So 1 16 of an inch change this direction for each pattern piece. And the length is stacked on top of one another. The next piece would be number 11, which is the jacket front facing, which we will also be skipping because again, it's just the jacket front that is then traced out along the inside. And just for forthrightness, we're also going to be skipping number 13, which is the sleeve facing, because once we measure the sleeve at the end, you could again, just keep that measurement along the bottom and trace out a facing. So those are the two we aren't gonna deal with, but we are gonna deal with the very last piece, the sleeve. And what I've done here is you can see that I've placed them all on top of one another along the straight of grain marking again. It just seems to be the easiest way to do it. And happenstance has that the bottoms entirely line up, whereas the tops are different. So huzzah, we have a good reference point. But now when we take a look, we're going to start right up here at the top of the shoulder. So right here at the top of the shoulder, you were looking at a quarter inch difference from the 12 to the 14 and astonishingly only an eighth of an inch difference from the 14 to the 16. And it looks like with the way the curvature is, this is gonna be a slightly wonky piece, especially along the arm's eye, because it's gonna line up with the like sharpness of the curve for each of them. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the sides of the sleeve. So the connection point here on the far side is a 1 8 inch difference in between the 12 to the 14 and a, wow, 3 8 inch difference between the 14 to the 16. Is that the same on the other side? Nope. On the far side, you're looking at a 3 8 inch difference between the 12 and the 14 and a quarter inch difference between the 14 and the 16. Along the bottom edge here, right in the first dart, you're looking at a quarter inch difference between each size. And on the far side of that, you're looking at a quarter inch difference between the 12 to the 14 and only an eighth of an inch difference between the 14 to the 16. And once we get down here to the termination, the lines are very small again, you're looking at a 3 16 inch difference between each size here and on this side as well. So what have we learned today? Number one, pattern grading math is hard and anyone that can do it gets a big air hug and two thumbs up for me because I, that, that hurt my brain to think about, especially the sleeve. Huh. There's just, there's math in there that I, I don't fully grasp and I'm just going to acknowledge that. I sell the patterns and I like to endeavor and look through them and try and learn these things about them, but I definitely 
don't know everything. Did we already know this? I think we already knew this. So did you learn anything today? I know I certainly did. Did I get something wrong? If so, mention it down in the comments below, being sure to keep it constructive for everyone, please. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you are clicking that like button, being sure to hit subscribe so that you never miss an upload from me, and turning on the bell so that your little cellular device or tablet or whatever you choose gives you a little notification every time that I post a new video. And when in doubt, stay beautiful, friends. We'll see y'all next time. Florida hair is always fucking frizzy. There's a ridiculous joke in here and I'm gonna go with it. So let's get measuring. That's not helpful. You have to be straight, you doobery, doobery thing. So let's get measuring. That is ridiculous and I think I kind of love it. Okay, great. I wanna remind everyone again, I have the center back seam lined up here because when we get to, wow, dear pattern weights, I put you there so this wouldn't move. Not helpful. So when we jump down to the notches, stop moving. You're supposed to hold the pattern, stupid things. And starting at the top, as we are ought to do, that is the wrong end of the tape measure. Motorcycles. And then just kind of nudge it slowly. I, I don't know. I should not be giving that type of advice. That felt dry as a bone. Existential dread, party of one.